So on this rifle I've got to put a wood patch box on it. You can see I've got it fairly close. All the parts are in. Front end is still square so I can hold it in the vise properly. Locks in, side plate, bolts, trigger, trigger guard, butt plate of course. And uh, I've got a pattern here for patch boxes and this will give me the proper dimensions I need to go on this gun. Now the one I'm going to make will not have these steps on the side so I'm just going to emit those and taper this from the curve back to the point here and this is going to be a two-piece patch box so there will be a bottom piece that will go on first be dovetailed in and the top half which I will cut to shape will be glued on. This really is not typical of what you find on these guns. Uh, usually they were one piece but it just takes so much longer to do and when I'm done you won't be able to tell the difference that it's a two-piece patch box um, and I suggest that for your first one too and as I go along I'll show how each of this, these uh, steps are done. The first thing we need to do is cut this bottom piece to the width and taper that I want and then I will inlet it in and take it down flush with the wood and then the top piece will be roughly shaped glued to it and everything finished out to size. So right now I've got the two pieces. Uh, the bottom is uh, about a quarter inch thick which is all you need and the top is about three-eighths of an inch thick and this, this will be tapered of course heavier at the back end thinner at the front tapering out to a feather edge basically all the way around the front and on the sides. So let me uh, kind of get started here. We'll make the hole, the cavity, and the stock first for the box and dovetail that and that'll be the next step. So uh, using my pattern I drew out the taper I wanted and I've already got one side beveled to the uh, bit that I'll be using because I'm going to use a router bit to actually make the channels inside the gun stock. And this is one I actually um, shaped myself but if you uh, get online and order a uh, 14 degree bit that'll work fine. To get the angle on the wood it's not terribly difficult. Let me turn this around here. Um, you can actually lay the bit up against here and with this shank perpendicular to the wood you can draw a line that will give you the approximate bevel that you want. Do the same thing on the other side and then it's just a matter of rasping or putting this on a sanding belt to get the angle that you want. To uh, rasp it Just kind of follow your line you got on the back here. lengthwise to make sure it's fairly flat. You can also use a sanding block to uh, make sure it's nice and flat, the proper angle. Mm -hmm. 
as close as you can there will be some adjusting to do once you get the cut out and the wood done but now we've got it pretty close so you can see the the nice bevel we've got and I've already sanded the flat side which would be the interior side nice and flat we'll inlet this into the wood and then take the top of this down flush with the wood so that it'll be the correct thickness that we need for the dovetail cut into the buttstock. So I've got this set up now. I've got my uh, brace underneath here. This is just a 2x6 that I put on a stand that I can move around. It's got a leather pad on top to protect the gun and this way when I'm pressing down it's not going to shift on me in the vise. Now I've marked the top end of the cavity and the bottom end you want a little bit of wood left because you don't want to cut this all the way out. Some guns were done that way uh, but most were not so I will put a mark here about a half inch up which will be the end of my cavity and then by using the spade bit I'll just start drilling a series of holes this will be the end so I want my first one right here looking at that mark I made on the bit to, ask, to give me the dip. And you can always deepen it a little bit later, but that's, that's a good depth there. That's about three quarters of an inch. And I want them so that they just start to barely overlap. And you can look in the cavity and see the depth of each one and keep cutting the next one down until it's equal with the one next to it. Alright, then we do the next one. didn't overlap that one quite enough to get a good idea of where the next where the depth is but we can figure it out as we go along And this same cavity uh, cutting can be done for uh, metal patch boxes as well. Now I want this to end at a certain point, so I'm going to have to do some finagling here because it will overlap quite a bit. And that's what you'll run into. So this last little bit will probably have to be finished out with chisels. But now I've got an idea of how far up I want it to go. But it's uh, grabbing and catching, kicking out, because I don't have enough bite there. But not a big deal. So now you can go in with some chisels and clean this up. I will mark the 
edges of the cavity I want. Now I did mark the outside of this with the bevel's top, but I don't want it as wide as the markings I've got because I want this to slide in underneath the dovetail that I'm going to cut. So by looking down on this I can see where the end of the dovetails are and mark in that much. In this case it's about yeah, a little less than a quarter of an inch. And by using the same measurements and following the line here, I can get myself an idea of the width I need to make the cavity. Now the upper end I've got pretty close. Another thing you can do is measure the piece you've got. Keep it in mind that you're going to be taking down the height of this, thereby losing some of the width you've got. And I go back and I'll check. I'm going to make this just a little bit wider at the top end. So now I've got the outside lines that I can cut to. And most of these cavities were done with squared corners. So all this will be squared up. This end I'll round off sort of to match the rounded edge on this. Flatten the center but round it on the edges. And that's the reason I do that is because when this is put in place and you slide it in the dovetail the slight bevel here around the corners will help guide it in easier than very square sharp corners. Alright, so the next step is to chisel this out. And uh, I will come back when I've got some of that done let you see how the progress is going. Alright, so I've got one side cleaned up a little bit. I haven't gotten up to the line that I've marked yet. Um, when I do, I have to sort of stab down beside it like in any other inlet and work my way along and I work from the front part to the back because the grain structure is running in that same direction and if I try and start at the back and go forward it'll want to chip out uh, pieces at, a, at an angle which I don't want to do it'll come out sort of like that this side would be a little easier I can actually cut it this way but the basic idea is just Cut away the excess and I'm just using a half inch chisel. If you have a wider one that works fine too and I'm using a, a wood carver's mallet which is nice because being round I can choke up on it and wherever I tap that's the head. Okay, so it works great. Now on the back end here we'll simply square this off. I'm not going all the way to the lines yet. But that gives me a point to work from.
not, not too worried about the bottom yet. I'll go back and clean all that up. That's getting close. I'm going to continue working on this near side, bringing it up to the line I've drawn. Notice I'm cutting at an angle right along the side, and then I can go along and straighten up that side by stabbing down. Now you can use a router if you feel comfortable enough to go in there and watching the lines following them and cut it all to a single depth. And I've done that, but I wanted to show you the ideas of you can do it with just simple chisels too, which is the way the old timers did it. Router is just quicker, more efficient, cleaner lines. But not everybody feels comfortable enough to use a router for something like this. Because if you do overcut it, you have to then make a new uh, set of lids. Alright, now we're going to do the other side, which will mean coming back. I'll go ahead and take this out to the edge.
All right, so we got that fairly good. Let's square up the end here a little bit better. If you've got a real sharp chisel, just pushing down on this will give you a clean cut along that cross grain or end grain. Sort of like inletting the breech of a barrel in the breech plug. Next thing I'm going to do is take the butt plate off and uh, sort of rough in the back end here to the dovetail that I want. So let me get this out the way and I'll be right back. Now with the uh, butt plate out of the way, we can start the uh, cut out the back end here. And your best bet is to draw you a line along the edge here as to how deep you want this to go. Because you don't want to overcut it. And to clean this cut up a little bit nicer, I use a uh, pillar file. It's got safe edges on both edges and fairly coarse cuts along the two large flats. And you can get everything smoothed up pretty nicely with that. You cut this down to that line you drew on the bottom so that everything is the same depth from side to side. Now we'll sort of eyeball where this is going to be and by looking at the end I can see that I'm going to have to take the whole thing out a little bit wider by about an eighth of an inch or so one way or the other and since this cutout now is sort of towards the lower side I'm going to take the cutout on the top side and just take another eighth of an inch off all the way down to about there. Check the top end and yeah, that'll be about right. Another reason for doing the top edge is that I can come in this way and with the grain running diagonally this way, I can cut into it and it won't peel pieces off the wrong way, which if I went on this side with the grain running in this way, it'd be harder to cut through this way. So this is just a matter of cutting along, taking little bits up to your line. You can use a mallet or just push it like I'm doing, going a little bit deeper each time. Basically just slowly working my way up to the line I put in there. And don't worry about the top end here because this is going to get re-radiused. Mm -hmm. 
use a mallet here to get started. And since you want to cut that sidewall all the way down to the cab bottom of the cavity, it's another time to go back, stab, and keep taking it off. And most people make these cavities a little too shallow, so that you really can't put much of anything in, in there. And this one I can see is only going to be about a half inch deep, so I might go a little bit deeper when I clean up the bottom, because I like to be able to put um, loading tools in there, jags and worms and whatnot. And if you want to, if you've got tools you want to go in here, you can sort of lay them in and see how much more you've got to cut away to make room for them to go in there. Keeping in mind they have to go below this level here, which will be the bottom of the lid. Alright, so that's getting pretty close now. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is put in the dovetailed side pieces. Now you can clean all this up first if you want to, but sometimes you may find you'll have to widen it out just a hair further. But um, Either way, it doesn't matter. You go ahead and clean everything up inside first. You want to get rid of all the chisel marks that you can. So cutting lengthwise with the grain helps a lot because right now I can see all the stab marks going down the sides. Of course, if you use that router idea, you won't have that problem. It'll be fairly clean sides.
Alright, I'm going to continue cleaning this up a little bit and I'll come back when I've got all that done and we're ready to put in the side dovetails. Okay, I've got the uh, sides all cleaned up now and to clean up the bottom what I've made is a, basically it's just a scraper. Take an inexpensive uh, uh, chisel I got from the hardware store, heat it up, place this end in the vise, bend it over at 90 degrees, make sure the edge is good and sharp, and you can use that to just scrape the bottom cavity. And you'll get a nice smooth finish in there. I've already done this one quite a bit, but you can use that and you can also turn it sideways and use it on the side walls too, working from both directions. And get that nice and clean in there. 